Good morning, everybody. Liam Murphy back to rip another five big boards on Underdog Fantasy for the $200,000 top prize. Where else can you get back-to-back -back morning streams other than here? In a first time in history, I've pulled up all five of these drafts. We're in them. We're waiting. We need six more for the first one to kick off. Hopefully that's filling up by the time this countdown's finished. Let's get it. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thanks for being here today. The big board is around 90% filled on Underdog. If for some reason you're not up and running there, you can use promo code CHESSLIAM for a $100 deposit match. Of course, the end of this month, the NFL draft will take place. I'm getting excited for that. As soon as that is done, Maybe even a day before, we should get Best Ball Mania 5 launched on Underdog. I hope to be ready with my site by then. Giving you guys back-to-back -back streams today because, well, A, I was in the mood for it. And B, going to a bachelor party this weekend, going to Mexico. So, not going to be streaming later this week. So I thought we'd get them down now. If you are not, please hit the subscribe button. We're on the road to 5K here. Big plans for this channel this summer. I think we can get there. Thank you. Two more people for this first draft. I guess while we wait, kind of wanted to look at some of my older big boards. What's going on, Proper 19? Let's go. Of course, the Masters kicks off on Thursday. The Albatross, looking like it might overlay, if you're an overlay hunter. We did get that first draft filled. We pulled the 103 there. We'll pull that up once it starts, but let's take a look at some of these older big boards. I've done 37. Almost all of them have been streamed. Not all, but most. Davis and I kicked it off with a Stroud and Kyler team where, you know, we got some solid value on Blake Corum, maybe. Maybe a little bit of value on Antonio Gibson. Overpaid on Ken Walker. I wasn't into that, but got to give Davis what he wants. We got Davis's key on Coleman. And the Stroud double without digs. Um, a hodgepodge of tight ends. Quentin Johnston. You don't love that. My first solo big board was a Josh and Mahomes double. I took Josh 101 just because you got to start the year off right. Got some running backs that need to hit. And we got Rasheed Rice. But we did fall into the Hollywood Brown stack. We maybe fell, fell into the Brian Thomas stack with Josh Allen. Got three tight ends there. Can look at these later. We are officially on the clock in this first draft. You know, Jamar Chase was my 101 last year. I don't really see a big change. I mean, arguably, he is in a better situation where, sure, Joe Burrow has not completed healthy season last year and chase had some injuries himself however t higgins could still be traded that could be a draft day trade or maybe even before then so we could be looking at jamar chase you know with no one else to compete with tyler boyd's out of there they drafted a couple wide receivers last year charlie jones andre isovius 
some late round darts. They'll probably add some more guys. And I guess Boyd could return, but seems pretty unlikely. We need five more for this second draft to fill. Draft continues. Tyreek, Bijan, Justin Jefferson. To me, it feels like there is a big six. I would say Justin Jefferson plus those are the players you feel stoked about. Yes, I like Reese Hall too. Yes, I like some of these guys. Amon Ra, A.J. Brown, Kyron Williams. I like a lot of the players on the back half too, but as far as safely projecting massive seasons when they're healthy, CMC, yep. C.D. Lamb, yep. Jamar Chase, yep. Tyreek Hill, yes. Bijan, yes. And Justin Jefferson, absolutely. Two more people for that second draft. Let me zoom in on my computer screen for you. I play chess, so sometimes this stays zoomed out. And it does help me multi-tabling to not have it too zoomed in. I got good vision, but for viewer experience. We'll zoom in here. Marvin Harrison Jr., one-two turn. I mean, he's the guy who... The Chargers are our wild cards, right? I could for sure see the Chargers trading down with the Bills if they were willing to eat a discount, right? Like if if Harbaugh's philosophy is, you know what? I want to take a year. I want to mold the team how I want it. Maybe we compete for Super Bowl this year. Maybe we don't. More importantly, I get my structure in place. And then next year... We're Super Bowl contenders. Maybe he passes on wide receiver. Would I? No. I think I would take Marvin Harrison Jr. to pair with Justin Herbert. That sounds that sounds good to me. He, though, I mean, he could even eat a little bit of a discount and trade the 105 for as little as the Bills first this year, the Bills first next year, and like a, a third and then some like some change, you know? I would say if I had to, we pulled the 110 in the second draft. If I had to choose a team most likely to trade with Buffalo, and not just with Buffalo, um, I will be taking Nico Collins. Simply because, I mean, this draft is almost... This contest is almost filled. Nico Collins was a one-two turn pick most of the year. So game theory wise, I still like the player. It makes all the sense in the world. Um, but yeah, I would say the team most likely to trade down with Buffalo, if I had to pick a team, would be the Bears at the 109. If Rome Adunze is sitting there still, now, if I'm the Bears, what would I do? I'd probably just draft Rome to pair with um, hmm. Sorry, gang. Let's do tank. Oh, I don't I don't think oh I did get the star in. So we're doing the Chase Nico tank stack. A reach on tank to make it happen. I mean, when Nico and Tank were healthy, I thought Tank was the 
more talented wideout. Now, Nico wins in a way we really like in best ball, where he wins down the field, he gets touchdowns. But yeah, um, if I'm the Bears, I would be drafting Rome to pair with Caleb. A, I mean, Keenan Allen could be one year, right? Like, I wouldn't be looking at Chicago and thinking, oh, they're set at wide out. They got DJ Moore and Keenan Allen. After that, they got no one. So I would be drafting Rome. Now, the kind of weird thing with the Bears is they only have four picks this year. They have the 101, they have the 109, and then they got like, I, I don't quite remember, but like a third and a fourth or something. Um, At the 110... Let's go AJ Brown, grown man alpha. Um, but yeah, so they don't have that many picks, but I mean, you drafted Caleb Williams. Your defense is already solid. You got DJ Moore, who's, how old is DJ? He's probably like 29, maybe, maybe 28, 26. So he's young. He's about to turn 27. Um, but I'd be drafting Rome if if the grade is there. Just to give Caleb two young weapons for the bulk of his career. And however, though, if they if they want the picks, if they feel like they need more picks, um let's go Drake London. I've drafted very little Drake. A little bit of sticker shock on him, but you know, we like we like Kirk Cousins passing game weapons. Does it make sense to me that Drake London is a second round pick and uh Kyle Pitts is a sixth round pick? No. Because Kyle Pitts was hurt last year, right? But if the Bears want the picks, I could see that being a team to trade back with Buffalo. Um now Buffalo I mean, they have a lot of picks this year, but they're late round. But really, their their extra pick is that next year's second. And I don't know what that does for the Bears. They probably want picks this year. So I don't know if the Bears would be willing to trade that far down. Maybe they would rather trade down with a team like, like I could see the Jaguars wanting to trade up with the Bears to get Rome as like a Calvin Ridley replacement. What do you think about the Derrick Henry and Lamar stack? I mean... A not not a good stack for a individual week, right? Where if Derrick Henry's hitting your lineup, you probably don't like the Lamar points hitting in your lineup, right? But it is a fine stack in the sense that over the course of a season, they can each have their spike weeks. So running back and quarterback is fine in that way. Um but we have to kind of save one pick for Stroud here. And let's go T. Higgins too. Let's try to do a Stroud and Burrow double. I was going to take Kelsey just because he's like kind of falling, but try we'll try to even tell the room what we're doing here. I mean, what the hell are we doing with Joe Burrow's ADP? Why would Stroud be a fifth round pick? And Joe Burrow, who we know is a fantasy star, is a six-round pick. I don't know, but this makes me not want to force too many Stroud doubles. Obviously, Stroud's got some of the best weapons in the game. And this the Diggs guy could go Stroud if he wants, um, which we don't mind. So we got the doubles. But yeah, so um, that's my thought there. I don't think uh, Blake Corum is a round one consideration at all. Like, that would be, like, gross negligence for Harbaugh to do that. Yeah, I mean, look, you got two picks, but to be honest with you, I don't think the Bears roster has that many holes, right? Okay, they need a another wideout, period. They need some O-line help. Defense-wise, though, I think they're kind of solid. Obviously, they're getting their quarterback. So 
one of their biggest holes, I would say, is another another wide receiver. So why not just go Caleb, you go Rome, and then you get your normal amount of draft picks next year. And maybe even more than that, right? Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull up the draft board here soon to say other teams I could see trading with the Bears. Um, so it's like, yeah, everyone, everyone's pointing this out like, oh, the bears only have four picks. They might want more, but I don't, I don't, I don't feel that forced to do that from the bears, right? Like unless they really want, they did, there is a report that they met with Xavier worthy. So unless the bears are like, look, rather than getting just Rome, we'd rather go like pretend they can get Xavier and Lad McConkie. Maybe they want like two options. Right. Yeah, everyone's saying the Bears are going to trade, but I don't know. I don't see four. One more person for this last draft here. Let me pull up the NFL draft board. Um, we're back on the clock here at pick thirty-four. We will take Josh Allen. Josh Allen for the bulk of this contest was a two, three turn. I'm not sure if Josh is falling because of what I said to Pat Corain when he was on, where I said, because I think he had him ranked up here. So I don't know if this is people just like blindly following Pat's ranks or if this is Stefan Diggs trade, but I have been loudly saying it doesn't make sense. Why? Like, I think Josh is valued as a, as a two, three turn guy, but it never made sense to me why he had a full round gap on Hertz. So anyways, I'm doing this for unique purposes. Not many Brown London, Josh stacks in the tournament. Of course, m many, most of the Brown stacks has got Hertz. So we're getting a little different there. We pulled the one Oh one for this one. Drafting with Anthony Burdain. RIP. Um, right, we got reach on Mahomes here. Seems fine. Uh, yeah, I love Josh Jacobs for, you know, like, could he get hurt? Sure. But, I mean, like, in his healthy seasons, this dude's going to be a wagon. Um, I guess we'll go CMC. It's not my favorite click in the world, but. We know that if he remains healthy, he is the best player in fantasy. So, kind of have to do it. Um, all right. So, Bears, Patriots, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Now, the Falcons. Right? So, like, let's say this. It goes... God, this NFL.com website is terrible. We're going we're gonna to find a different way to look at the draft board because... NFL.com just serves up too many ads. So does ESPN, I think, honestly. Like when it like auto plays videos and stuff like that. Um, we do have two more drafts, by the way, if you want to draft with me. Okay, so let's say it goes like this. It goes Caleb Williams, quarterback, quarterback, Cardinals trade out. Um, we're not going to fool around. We are going to go Burrow here. So we got our Stroud Burrow double. That's just, that's just fun right there. Right. And maybe T's traded, which could be good. Could be good if it's not a double. Um, so we're saying the cards trade with the Vikings and the Vikings go McCarthy. And then the, now the chargers are on the clock and let's just, let's pretend they do the smart thing and they go MH Marvin Harrison Jr. The Giants take neighbors. The Titans take tackle. The Falcons take edge rusher, which of course they could, that's a Rome destination too. And now the, now the Bears are on the clock. So teams that would like wide out. The Jets, um, the Cardinals, if they trade, would like him. So the, the Cardinals could like trade down to the 11th and then trade back up with the Bears. Like that seems pretty likely to me. Um, we are on the clock here. In the seventh round. And. Yeah, 
Yeah, we'll just gamble that Aaron Jones can remain healthy. Should be a star in fantasy if he is. Kind of leverages off of Justin Jefferson too, right? Where we took Chase instead of Jefferson, so we got Jones. Um. So yeah, I could see the Cardinals 100% trading back up with the Bears. You give the Bears some more picks. They trade down, not that far. And the Cardinals take uh, Rome. The other teams that, that would want Rome. Um, the Saints, maybe. Colts, I mean, that wide receiver room's pretty bare after um, Pittman and Downs, right? The Jaguars. The Jaguars could for sure want to trade up. The Bengals might want to trade away T. Higgins as part of the package to the Bears to go get Rome. And, and some picks. Um, Rams, no. Steelers. The Steelers got rid of Deontay Johnson. They could trade up, but this doesn't, doesn't seem likely. The Dolphins. The Dolphins could say, you know what? We got Tua. We got Waddle. We got Tyreek. But A, Tyreek is getting older. And B, it's not good enough to beat Josh Allen. It's not good enough to beat Mahomes. It's not good enough to beat Burrow. So we got we to gotta make this move. Pick 58 over here. Um, yeah, I mean, I would like Amari Cooper, but not going to risk missing out on the Kincaid stack there for a nice piece in fantasy. But, you know, there's some other nice pieces here. Uh, four more waiting for this next draft, by the way. Um, so yeah, the Jags, the Bengals might trade up. The Dolphins could trade up if they're like, we need a big three to even like dethrone one of these guys. Eagles, probably not. Cowboys, yes, the Cowboys could want, you know, besides C.D. Lamb, they don't got a bunch. The Packers, the Packers could say, I'm tired of all these, like, 1A, 1Bs. Let's go get ourselves an alpha. Rack on the clock with the CMC team. So Debo, I don't know what's going on. My computer is struggling. I think ESP, the ESPN thing is messing me up, but we're going Debo and Malik Neighbors. And then we went uh, Ken Walker. Ken Walker, boom bust, but love him in best ball. Especially at that cost. So yeah, the the Packers could trade up. The Bucks. I don't think it's wise for the Bucks to trade up because they, um, you know, they're probably going to need to get a quarterback after Baker flames out. So, but, you know, Mike Evans is old. Chris Godwin is old and maybe slowing down. And then you got the Bills, of course, the Cardinals we already talked about. So quite a bit of teams could compete for this 109. And then you got to consider maybe the Bears just say, screw it, we're, we're taking Rome. Let's close that. Two more people for this fourth draft. Might only do four today if the fifth takes a while to fill. So I got some stuff to do today. Odds the Bills trade for an established wide receiver one in Ayuk or Higgins? Well, I mean, Ayuk, to me, is in a different class than T. Higgins, right? Like, T. Higgins is a jump ball specialist. Yes, he can get open, but he is just not, you know, I've I've kind of faded T. Higgins a bit in best ball when he was like a second round guy. I, you know, never was that caliber player to me. Um so I don't see a Higgins trade at all, unless it's cheap, you know, because if he's like far cheaper, pull the 102 for this fourth one. Um, so I don't see Higgins trade unless it's cheap. A, like why would the Bengals trade with the Bills? They would they would not want to do that. Ayuk, though, I think the Ayuk trade is realistic, but I could see Kyle not doing it. 
at the eighth round here. Um, yeah, we're just going to go Mostert, you know. Mostert's a tough, like, a tough eval, but you kind of just have to at least go 8 percentage Um, Because we know that he can bury us, right? It's not guaranteed he slows down. Got, he got a contract extension. Not a great guy to count on for week 17, probably, you know, but still possible. Uh, 102. Let's get weird. Let's go, Bijan. It's not that weird because he, he's like the 105, but whatever. We're going Bijan. I'm going to close this fourth one. It's just taking too long to fill this morning. So we're doing four today. So yeah, the, the Ayuk trade, like, it makes sense from the Bills side. But here's why it wouldn't make sense from both sides. A, if you are the 49ers, you risk looking like a fool, right? You risk trading away Ayuk. He continues to even further develop. And you're just kind of left thinking, like, what the hell were we doing? Um, yeah, we'll go to Nujoku here. Pick 99, get one of the tight ends that we don't hate. Um, so, yeah, so for the Niners, it would be tough. Like, A, like, Debo's old. CMC is oldish. Kittle's old. So, real quick, the 49ers could be like Brock Purdy and who if they get rid of Ayuk. So, not the best look towards the future to me. From the Bills side, you know, I think cap, like, they are at the cap a little bit. So, I don't know how much they would love having to part with the first and having to pay the player. We are going to go Christian Watson here. I caught some of Pete's stream where he was hating on me taking Christian Watson. Uh, and Christian Watson as the player. I think he's like way off base there. But we'll have to dive into the numbers later in the season. Over here, we're going McBride. And yeah, why not? We'll take the spikes of Lamar at a discount here. I mean, Christian Watson was just not healthy last year. Still scored five touchdowns, but it did set up a possible Jordan Love stack. This guy did have Jaden Reed, though. Um, we don't really need to set up the stack either. We could go Kirk Cousins, of course. If we still want it. Um, we will take Adonai Mitchell because if the Bills stand pat, I think he is one of the more likely guys to be drafted by Buffalo. I think he's probably worth that pick. So let's pretend Brian Thomas Jr. goes in the mid-rounds. And the Bills trade up a little bit to get Mitchell. Who, you know, like, it's the DK Metcalf hope. But yeah, Watson, you know, just wasn't healthy last year. If the man gets the hamstrings fixed, like, I'm not, I'm not over here choosing which players are going to be healthy just because they were unhealthy in their second season. You know, it's like like Pete hating on him reminds me of, you know, like people being like, oh, can't take CMC. CMC got hurt. <laughs> okay. And it's also the end of a major tier, right? Like the next guy that goes is JSN. With Bijan... Go Josh Jacobs. Let's just try to alpha running back this one. You got caught off guard by the live stream? That's like 99% of what I do on this channel. Although, I'm thinking about doing some more long form. Uh, just forgot the word, guys. 
content. There we go. Um, yeah, we're alpha RBing this one. I mean, Derrick Henry would be just be a bet on absurd touchdowns, but ETN could just be mispriced, like too low. And so we're going our triple RB. We're going to figure it out. It's a fun combo. I don't think there's a lot of Bijan, Jacobs, ETN combos running out there. Yeah, and I like it's, I mean, I don't really know what's going to happen in the Packers wideout order right now. Of course, they could draft someone, but to me, like Dobbs from watching the games, he's like the dude, Alan Lazard, it like, and maybe that's a little unfair, but he ran real hot on like really tight touchdowns. He doesn't separate, you know. We know Watson has the speed to separate. So I like the bet. I will never get used to Justin Herbert just being like an afterthought 10, 10th round pick. And if they draft like Marvin Harrison Jr., he's just going to like jump back up to the eighth. And we're going to be like, hey, remember that summer or that offseason where people were just losing their minds? Um, let's go Jonathan Brooks. You know, we're feeling solid at wideout with our, our double stacks here. And... Jones could break down. Moster could break down. Brooks should pick up. Good texture. Are you drafting any Miles Sanders? Yeah, a little bit, but it, he is a tough eval. All right, we're going to go Deontay and Hopkins. Deontay is not a guy I've drafted a lot of, but I mean, we know what we're looking for with him over here. Let's add Dalton Schultz to the triple. And then over here, yeah, I like. Similar to Jonathan Brooks, I like Trey Benson even more because he should just start playing right away. So some nice balanced teams there. Schultz, you know, Schultz is a bit of a loser, obviously, with Diggs landing there. But, hey, Tank is already hurt. Any of them could get hurt. Um and it feels good just adding more pieces that can catch touchdowns from my QBs. Yeah, so Deontay, you know, he's not my favorite click in the world. You're basically hoping he can do Adam Thielen things. And Adam Thielen's still there, so that makes it a little complicated too. On our Josh Allen team here. We're again going to go Brooks. So we got Jacobs, Walker, Benson, and Brooks. Making us a little thinner at wide out, but fine enough. So this is our quadruple or our triple rb start and we're gonna do something that you should not try at home which is start with four obviously not all three can hit your lineup in a week but we're gonna start at four and be done would rather this fourth have been james cook but i think white and cook are similar and cook and white by the way two players i love at the moment but they're two players that could for sure have a Benson or a Brooks land there, which would be a little cold water. 
Um, and then You know, the prudent thing to do is go wide out, but we're going with Gride. We're going to try to go. We want to do two tight ends to give us just extra bullets at the wide out. Good morning, Bindles. A YouTube member. If you want to become one too, click the join button. Get access to a private Discord. Okay, to recap so far, we got a Stroud Burrow with Jones, Moster, Brooks, Chase, Collins, Dell, Higgins, Nujoku, Schultz. We got a Josh with Jacobs, Walker, Benson, Brooks, Brown, London, Watson, Adonai, Mitchell, Kincaid. We got a Lamar, CMC, Debo, Neighbors, Deontay, Hopkins, McBride. And the don't try this at home, Bijan Jacobs, ETN, White, McBride. Like, I think McBride will score similar, if not more points, than Cooper and Kirk. Um, and it affords me to just go two tight ends. Like, I'm just going to force two. And probably... 12 wide receivers. So we're throwing it back to the hyper fragile. Something not done as much in today's climate. It's been so beaten into people that like you need to go zero RB, don't get buried at wide receiver. And so that, that brings an opportunity to zig. Okay. Uh, might as well take Purdy. I really don't like paying this price for Purdy. But we do have CMC and Debo, so seems logical. And let's go Trey Benson. That range of running backs is a little flavor for everyone. Okay. I mean, I think the love affair with Wix has gone a little too far where I like gambling on him, but he could for sure be benched if they draft another guy. He's probably the wide receiver three or four there at the moment. Um, but... Little division opponent of Aaron Jones on our Josh Allen team. Yeah, might as well make the Shakir gamble. So we did lose out on Kirk to the Kyle Pitts drafter, which that's fine. Shakir is like Wicks where... I mean, he could be a major value, or he could hit the bench for stretches. Um, need another wide out. I love gambling on Mooney. Just feels like locked in for solid production. Um, need some more wide outs. What pick are we at? 135. Yeah, let, people have gone too far. Hate on Dolan Schultz. We'll take him. Over here, we need wideouts. Let's go, Hopkins. My Apple Watch is being really annoying with these drafts. Let me try to. I think I can put it on theater mode and it'll stop. Yeah, but Ant, we haven't even hit the draft. Ant saying Shakir's top of jet depth chart right now. And I don't, 
I don't know if that's true. Like maybe Curtis is ahead of him. Maybe Kincaid is ahead of him in target order. But he seems like a winner of the Diggs trade. Um, yeah, again, we're just kind of be taking our QBs here. I mean, our wideouts here. So we'll take Deontay. Hopkins and Deontay, two wide receiver ones on teams with quarterbacks we don't uh, love, maybe. If you're not a member of my Discord, the link to join is in the YouTube description below. Thanks for being here, guys. Make sure to like the stream. And subscribe. We're on the road to 5K. Joe asking, what's your take on the Browns backfield? I got asked this, I think, yesterday or last week, too. It hasn't really changed where, I mean, it's very, it's very complicated. And we got, you know, I have to kind of read into it more. But at the current moment, Deontay Foreman signs there. And I think you can either read that as a massive win for Nick Chubb, where it's like, hey, you got this older guy there. Um, Let's go Brooks here. And we're going to go Gabe. Um, yeah, you could view Deontay Foreman as like a massive win for Nick Chubb where, hey, him and Ford are just going to kind of carry the rock until Chubb can return. You could also view it as a negative for Chubb where they're planning to just roll with Ford and um, Foreman. We also need to see what they do in the draft. They could for sure, if they add another guy that just complicates it further. So I'm going to wait and see approach until we get through the draft with them at the moment. Nick Chubb is not my favorite gamble. Um, we know the ceiling is there, but I just need to read into more like when the return is happening and and all that. What the, what the buzz is like. So I think he's a fine gamble, but there seems safer gambles also with a lot of upside close to his price, right? Like Benson seems like a safer gamble. Uh, I do like him more though than some of the running backs here, but yeah, not someone I've taken a lot. We're going to go Michael Wilson here. Michael Wilson is like the cheaper Shakir. <laughs> Delvin Cook says he's ready to go. What? Did someone sign him yet? No, right? Yeah, no. I mean, he was on the Ravens, right? Their practice squad. Oh, uh, yeah, so Michael Wilson is kind of like Shakir where he's like the de facto at the top of the depth chart, but just several rounds cheaper. I think more draft capital, too. Um, On the clock over here, I like the Algier play. We're on the clock over here. This is a team we need wideouts. Sure, why not? Mike Williams, we know what we need there. And then on our Josh Allen team. Let's 
go Rico Dowdle. We're back on the clock here. And I'm going to take Tyler Lockett. I mean, last year, if you could get Hopkins, Johnson, Mike Williams, and Tyler Lockett as wideouts, you were feeling solid. And not that much has changed. Obviously, Mike got hurt last year. Um... Go Antonio Gibson. I think Antonio Gibson got, I don't know if this was like real or not, but I think he got number 12 for the Patriots, which was Tom Brady's number. Take Marshawn Lloyd. So we're going triple triple rookies with CMC. And, I mean, I don't know, man. Brandon Cooks it seems like he's in a pretty prime spot to me. Like, we know it's all deep ADOT spike week touchdowns. Josh Palmer is also, like, I don't know. He just doesn't have quite the weekly ceiling. But he is maybe the safer bet for total fantasy points. He, again, he might like Michael Wilson and Khalil Shakir. He is the only guy there right now for the Chargers. So Cruising around, we are in the 10th round in our latest draft. The other ones are in the 13th and 15th rounds. Hoosier says he's happy there's a little board too. That did drop. Get in it now if you want. Those little, those smaller buying ones fill up quick. I have so little Kendra. I'm going to take. I wasn't sure if I was going to add another running back. Uh oh. Around the clock here. No. That's the one team I couldn't really. I did not want to auto on. I got Khalil Shakir in the star, but I just I just missed it by half a second. So our the one team I didn't want to auto on, which was the four RB start. We did auto Tajay Spears. That's on me. That's okay though. We will though.
We're going to take Justin Herbert and just try to lock in some a bunch of QB points as well. And then Drake May, I would have taken. I did not. Th I mean, I don't know if this guy's auto drafting, but I didn't think a Hurts and Love drafter would want a third quarterback. So with him being gone, I'm gonna take. Uh, I'm gonna take Tyler Coughlin actually. Tight end dries up. I don't need a third, but I kind of like it. And then we'll just be filling this thing out with wideouts. So, with it being 20 rounds, we can survive the fifth running back here. Is a little bit of stack with Hopkins as well. And for punting wideout, I mean, this gang could work out. How many picks left here? We're going to go Devontae Walker, athletic freak, I believe. I think we'll take Likely to pair with Lamar. Why not? And Rico. Rico should be in the mix in that Cowboys backfield. And I mean, it's quite possible that Brooks or Benson is the RB1 for the Cowboys. So possibly we got the Cowboys running back room. Let's take Conklin. At, oh, screw it. We'll take Mike Kosicki. I think Conklin is like the safer bet for a solid amount of fantasy points. However, Mike Kosicki did help win a million dollars for me. He is a stack with Joe Burrow. So that gives us Dalton and Kosicki. You know, he's a risk to be a zero if they add someone like um, Bowers, but it's in the mix. Our Justin Herbert team is coming up here. Someone took Josh Palmer, so we will take Quentin Johnston probably, but we're going to take uh, the boring bet and Brandon Cooks first. Just getting a discount on him. And if we get sniped on Quinn Johnston, we're okay with that. All right, Malachi Corley seems to be in that discussion on our Josh Allen team here for round one, round two, maybe round three. Don't love the pick, but I mean, what round are we in here? The 13th round with a stack as our wide receiver six, former first round pick. 
It's a cheaper bet than like Sky Moore. And like, I don't know. I guess like if Quentin Johnston somehow is able to like do an NFL offseason conditioning program and just get better hands, get more agile, we could see improvement. At worst, just be like a red zone, a red zone target, you know, like if he's just like a tight end. Let's go Malik Washington. He's a similar bet to Malachi Corley. I think we're done at running back over here. We're done at tight end. And might just be going single QB, or I might add on a QB if I feel like it. I don't take Bateman a lot, but betting that he is healthy on a Lamar team makes sense to me. And Jermaine Burton, I hear some buzz for, about him. Samaki, looking forward to the Masters. Happy Masters week to you. Although I'll be in Mexico for most of the Masters, so. Don't think I'll be watching too closely. All right, we're going to Evan Hull. I mean, Kenneth Gainwell, man. Like, what just what did he show? The whole year, two touchdowns to show for it. Not that stiff a competition. We're gambling on Evan Hull. We want six running back over here. Running back's a little thin for us, but that's just how it's going to have to be. Plus, I want to end this one with some more stack options. On our Herbert team, we will take Will Levis because we do have Tajay Spears and Hopkins. Okay. Taking a Sovius or tacking on another burrow piece. I think we'll Hunter Henry on our Alpha RB start here as our tight end two. Seems fine. Should get a quarterback upgrade, we hope. And probably tacking on five more wideouts to this room on our Josh team. Go Brendan Rice. 
I don't know. He could be mid round consideration. Oh, I had planned to do something else there, but I forgot by the time. Oh, well. These are the big board. I think the ADP is a little bit different in the little board. And I'm going to take Mac Collins on this build. Like, I don't think it's likely Mac Collins is a good piece in fantasy. I think it, even if he plays a lot, he's most likely going to be a blocking wideout. But, I mean, hey, how bad can a stack partner be? And the other thing is he could get um, cucked by Justin Shorter. On the clock here... I think I'm going to go Robinson and Dorch and just add to division opponents of that. Do I want six running back? Now we're going to go Banacanda instead of Dorch. He, I mean, he could lose his RB2 job, but right now he's the RB2 behind Brees Hall. The Josh Allen team did finish up. We went Josh and Josh Jacobs. Ken Walker, Benson Brooks, Rio Dowdle, Kendry Miller, A.J. Brown, Drake London, Christian Watson, Adonai Mitchell, Khalil Shakir, Michael Wilson, Malachi Corley, Malik Washington, Brennan Rice, Matt Collins, Kincaid, Schultz, Conklin. Single QB. Our Stroud and Burrow team. He's got one more pick left. So far, it's got Stroud, Burrow, Aaron Jones, Mostert, Jonathan Brooks, Tyler Algier, Antonio Gibson, Evan Hull, Chase, Nico, Dell, T, Dontavian Wicks, Darnell Mooney, Devontae Walker, Andre Isobius, David, no David Njoku, Don Schultz, Mike Kosicki. Who's your asking, can you draft the little board with different strategies than the big board? Well, for example, like I said, I'm for this draft, I paired Nico with Jamar Chase because 90% of this contest was filled. That's not something you're as keen to do in the little board because that's just, that's just what the ADP is. So things like that are at play, yes. Um... Yeah, I would say Tyler Boyd is a possible signing for the Chargers. Oh, God. Interest in signing with the Steelers. That would not be what we want. This team, we're going to end it with... Charlie Jones, the forgotten wideout in Cincinnati. He got hurt last year, but we have the whole Cincinnati offense now, we hope, other than the running backs. Let's go Jalen Hyatt. You know, in a healthy season, QB upgrade. You know what you're looking for for him, similar to what Darius Slayton did last year. I'm just going to live with Herbert and Will Levis at QB. Could be argued it's a little thin. And it would like a third, but I mean... Nothing really left that makes a ton of... I could have gone Bryce Young for the stack, I guess. But we didn't. 
We're just finishing this bad boy off with three more wideouts. This team, I think I could go wide out or tight end. And I think I'm going to go tight end. Three rounds left in our last one. Thanks everyone who made it this far. Make sure you do click the subscribe button and like the stream. Leave a comment if you're watching this on replay. All interaction helps. Let's go Theo Johnson. Athletic freak. Hopefully he gets the draft capital. Bringing us to our last team here, which, you know, if I wasn't streaming, I might just star a bunch of wideouts and close it up, but I'll ride it out with you guys. Well, let's just throw some guys in here anyways. We threw some names in there, some of them decoys, some of them not. Take Phoenix. No, thank you. I'm going to wait and see where he goes in the draft. And this team probably needs the wide out hope, help. You know, if Herbert and Levis are both like 20 points-ish per game, Maybe Herbert is a little bit more. Maybe Levis is a little bit less. You can get by with that if you're getting points elsewhere. And this team could be disastrous at wide out. So we want more shots there. What do you think of Bijan? Disappointed me considering all the hype last year. I mean, I like I like uh I like Bijan quite a bit. I think Kirk is a huge QB upgrade. I think Getting rid of Arthur Smith is an upgrade. Is it possible Algier still plays a bit more than people like? Yes. But, you know, as far as running backs you feel good about in fantasy, there's only one that is ranked higher for a reason. So, we're going to take Burks here at another Levis piece. Um, yeah, I'm not in the business of fading young second year guys who are generational prospects. Was he a first round value last year? No. Right. But in a season where. You know, Drake London and Kyle Pitts and Mooney get tackled at the one a bunch or at the five or whatever. Bijan will smash. And that's what we, you know, we have to understand that we can't just be like, well, this is what happened. So therefore, this player is this. There's a lot of things like that in fantasy where, if a wide receiver gets one more yard here or whatever, that totally changes who scores fantasy points on that team. Five tabling, Travoli, I hate to admit, but we only did four today because the fifth took too long to fill. Let's 
So we got some veterans in here, not just auto drafting down, actually making these picks. Thank you. Thank you for our sanity. So for punting off wide receiver, honestly, like, could look worse than having Hopkins, you know, in the one or two conversation for Tennessee. Deontay, likely the one, but in the two com one or two for Carolina. Mike Williams, who should be the at least the two for the Jets. Um, if healthy, Lockett should be in the two conversation for Seattle. Brandon Cooks, who could be in the two conversation for Dallas. QJ, who should be in the two conversation. And then, you know, some darts. Yeah, Darius Slayton, a great guy to add in as our, our 11th wide out. All right, guys. That's what I got for today. Might not see me the rest of this week again i'm leaving for a bachelor party thanks for watching hit the like button hit the subscribe let me know what you think in the comments have a great day peace